Subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to get notified for the latest tech videos. Hey what's up YouTube this is Vasi here and in this video I'm going to be telling you about 11 essential softwares that every Mac user should have. So let's begin the video. Before I continue with the video I should tell you that these 11 softwares are for all Mac users so even if you're a beginner new to Mac or if you're using the Mac for a long time then I can bet that you're going to use one of these softwares sooner or later in your life. So that's why you should have these softwares on your Mac. The other thing is that some of these apps are free and some of them are paid and even the paid app justify their price due to the functionalities that they perform so the first app on my list is fox which is basically a download manager for your mac so you can get it free but if you want to get unlimited download speeds you can buy the pro version as well so having a download manager makes your life much easier because in this way you can download multiple files at a time and you have the ability to pause and resume your downloads as well on my mac i'm going to open fox and here you can see first of all you're going to have this kind of interface pretty basic one but let's get the job done here in the all section it's going to show you all the files that you have downloaded or are downloading so here if i go to chrome and download any file from my google drive let's say this particular folder then you can see what uh, fox can do when it is downloading files the other thing is that you need to have plugins for fox on your uh, chrome browser or mozilla browser as well which are completely free here you can see it says open fox so you're going to check box this option and press on open fox so it's always open the fox download manager it's going to give you the link where it is being downloaded where you want to save it and if you want to rename your download file folder you can do so like i can name it g drive so that i know what i am downloading if i have multiple downloads after that just press on ok and here if i go on to the downloading tab you can see that the download has started it's going to show you how much data is downloaded how much is the actual size which is 860 mb the time remaining and the download speed as well which is quite cool and if you want to see more download speed you can just simply press on windows and go to bandwidth activity and here you can see a uh, second by second download activity as well second app on my list is Mackey, which is basically a clipboard manager for your mac we have similar thing like this on windows 11 which is built in so basically what Mackey does is allows you to copy text and keep a history of that copied uh, text value so if you're going to paste them you can just simply scroll to the history and paste them so i highly recommend that students should have this on your mac because it's going to make your life much easier uh, the software is free but you can buy it from the app store if you want to support the creator as well here on the mac i'm just simply going to open the mac software and on the menu bar you're going to have this root icon if i press on it it's going to show any history if you have so so if i go to preferences you can set any hotkey in my case it's uh, shift command v make sure that you enable this option launch at login if you go to storage i'm going to just mainly going to copy text files so i have selected this if you want to copy images or files in your history you can do that as well and the history size is 20 meaning that at max mackie can save 20 files in this history tab bar and you can go up to 200 as well here we have some simple basic appearance pins and in, in ignore i have ignored these three applications here i have opened my word file and let's say that i copy this particular text and i have already copied these text as well let's say i want to paste these text right here i'm going to press the hotkey to open mac in my case it's command shift v and it's going to show you the history of all the text that you have copied let's say i want to paste this text so i'm going to hover over the text and i'm going to press option return and you can see that the text has been copied let's say if i go here press on the hotkey again and if i want to uh, paste this text just press option enter and the text will be copied third app is in a video player which the name tells is a video player but it is much better than the native video player on your mac the second thing is it is completely free and you can download it the third thing is that it's going to support all the major video file formats like mp4 and even mkv which the native mac player does not support and it has a lot of options regarding your video dimensions your subtitles and your audio if you want to download ina you're going to press on the download button i will put the website link in the video description it is completely open source that's why it's free so let's say i want to play this particular video if i go to full screen here you can see it is being played on ina now if i press on these three dots right here you're going to see a complete menu pops up if you go to video you can change its aspect ratio as you can see right here you can add any crop factor if you want to 
which I'm going to abort for now. You can rotate the video. You can increase the speed, brightness, contrast. Everything is under your control. And if I go to audio again, you have these audio settings as well. If you have any subtitles in the video, you can uh, specify that subtitle file right here. Usually it's going to automatically detect it. If it's in the same folder, you can change the subtitle color, its location, its position and its scale. Fourth app on my list is Magnet. So don't get confused by the name. Basically this app allows you to open split windows on Mac. If you're using Mac for a long time, then you should know that it's really hard for you to open multiple tabs at the same time like if you want to open google chrome at one side and a pdf document on the other side then you have to manually scale them but with this app it becomes completely easy the app is paid but it's going to justify its price after you use it once so we're just simply going to open the magnet app right here on the top you're going to have this bar so here are all the different options that you can do let's say i have my microsoft to do on one side and my google chrome on the other side and if i want to have a split view there are multiple ways that you can do First of all, you can just simply drag and drop on the side and you can see it's going to just snap on its place. Same for the other side or the other file, other tab as well. And the other way is that if you can just select the application, go to the magnet menu bar and here you can see you're going to have these multiple options as well. Fifth app on the list is Amphetamine. So basically this app makes or keeps your Mac awake. So if you're downloading large files, then you're going to notice that your Mac just goes to sleep and there is no way and the download is aborted or if you're exporting a large video on premiere pro or final cut pro this process or the problem is same so we're going to open the amphetamine app and it's going to show an icon on the menu bar with this circle if you select on it it says start new session indefinitely minutes and hours so basically in this app a session is how long is your mag is going to stay awake so if you're going to select indefinitely then it means that your mac is not going to sleep at all which i do not recommend but you can go with hours and minutes so basically if you know that your export is going to complete in like two hours you can select the session to be four hours to be say on the safe side and after that you're going to know that your mac is going to go to sleep sixth app on the list is drop over which the name implies that you can drag and drop files easily on your mac so you do not need to open multiple windows at the same time to do this process it is by far the best app that I have used on the Mac operating system. It is paid, but it justifies its price as well as Magnet does. We're going to open drop over and you're going to have this little drop over icon on the menu bar. If you go to preferences here, you can uh, actually enable the drop over in multiple ways. The first way is to guest uh, uh, using a gesture. So if you just simply uh, shake a file, you're going to get this drop over icon. So this is the first way. The second way that I find easier is using a modifier key. So if I press the command key and move a file, then the drop over shelf will pop up. If you go to advanced, here are the settings. Again, launch and login should be enabled. Cloud sharing. So basically what drop over does allows you to share the files on the cloud as well and get a shareable link, which is quite cool. In instant actions, you got four of these in which I use AirDrop a lot. You got some watch folders and drop over pro again which i have bought let's say that i want to drag and drop this file so i'm just simply going to drag this file place it on the shelf i'm going to close this tab right here go to the destination folder and i'm just simply going to drop it so you can see how easy it is to use and you can drag and drop multiple files at the same time on the same shelf or on different shelves and if i press on the same file again place it on the shelf if i go to these three dots you can see that uh, if you have configured your Google Drive, you can copy it to Google Drive in which it's going to first upload it, the file to the Google Drive and then going to give you a, a shareable link instantly. The last thing is that if you drag any file and go to this electric icon, you can see that you can instantly airdrop the file, go to messages, email or iCloud. So these are some of the features that make this drop over app unique as compared to other apps on the App Store. Seventh tool is Kaka, which is basically a zipping tool for your Mac. Again, your Mac has a built-in zipping tool, but this app has a lot of features. Like it's going to allow you to zip file in multiple formats, zip the file in chunks and have a password on the zipped file as well. And the best thing is that it is completely free, but you can buy it from the app store to support the creator if you want to. So I'm going to open the Kaka app and here it's going to have a basic interface. You're going to have the method normal fast or easy like again how much compression you want 
the slower the com uh, the speed the higher the compression rate you can have any splits if you want to for the final zip file you can set a password on them as well and here you have a bunch of options that you can do with this so if you want to zip any file just drag and drop that file or folder onto keka and you can see it's going to instantly create a zip file if you want to have a password on that zip file make sure that you type the password first and then drag and drop that file to be zip eighth app is basically a screenshot software which is called snip first of all it's going to take screenshots of particular windows blurring the background second thing is that uh, you can have uh, screenshots where you're going to scroll like on a website which i'm going to show you for your better understanding third thing is that whenever you're going to take a screenshot you can edit it directly live blurring any particular piece of information adding arrows and notations and steps so that's why i recommend this software again it is free but if you want to remove the watermark on the screenshots you can buy the pro version as well i'm going to open the xnip software and on that menu bar you're going to have this scissor icon let's say that i want to take a screenshot of both of these windows without the background so i'm going to press on the snip tool and press on start capture so you can specify a particular area as well but if you want to take a screenshot of a particular program you can select it and you can see that only that program is screenshot is taken but if you want to take screenshot of multiple programs let's say so i'm going to press on the start capture button again and i'm going to press on the shift key this time and i'm going to select both the programs and you can see that it is going to cleanly take screenshot of both the or any programs that you want and now here you can see you can do different things like you can add uh, different shapes like square a circle a line and you can even add arrows as well if you're going to make a tutorial video you can add annotations and let's say if you want to blur certain parts you can just simply blur those things as well after that just press on the save button and the screenshot is saved instantly another cool feature of the snip tool is to take screenshots of scrolling pages so again if i select a particular area of the website ina and i want to uh, take the screenshot of the below part of the website as well i'm going to press on this button right here and now if i scroll down you're going to see that the whole screenshot is being taken if i press on save go to my desktop and show you you can see that the whole screenshot has been taken cleanly by this software so that's why i recommend this software because the built-in mac software cannot do these all things ninth app is bandwidth plus which is a free app and this app is going to allow you to monitor your internet speed we're going to open the bandwidth plus app here on the top it's going to show you the icon it's going to show you the network name the download the upload and how much it has done it if i go to the preferences of bandwidth it is pretty simple you can select automatic start at login if you want to only see download speed you can select this option if you want to see only upload speed you can see this option if you want to see both the uh, things you're going to select upload and download and you can set if you want to see your speed in megabytes or kbs 10th app on the list is iStats menu which is going to allow you to monitor your cpu usage your hard disk usage your disk usage and even your gpu usage so all of these things are pretty easy to uh, monitor if they are on top of your menu bar we are going to open the iStats menu you're going to have these different options like cpu you're going to have memory disk network and so on so usually i enable cpu and disk for this case i'm just going to show you the cpu so you can see that whenever i have enabled cpu you're going to have all of these different options and in putting them on your menu bar is pretty simple all you're going to do is to select any uh, visual and drag and drop it on this and you're going to see an instant change on the menu bar as well you can change the colors and all of these different things but in my case again i simply see the cpu and gpu usage and the disk usage on my mac and if you press on any of these metrics you're going to see much more details as well which is quite cool last app on the list is an app to control or clean your menu bar because when you're going to have a lot of these apps your menu bar is going to be filled and not all apps can fit on this little menu bar so the app name is bartender it is paid uh, but if you want to have a free alternative then there is one which is called vanilla but for now i'm going to show you bartender here on the top you can see that my menu bar is completely stacked so i'm just simply going to open the bartender app and you can see that instantly my whole menu bar has been cleaned so we're going to open the preferences again you have a lot of options available here first of all launch bartender at login should be activated and here are all of the different things that you can do 
the main thing is the bartender menu bar icon in my case i have selected glasses you can go with the bartender and you can see that the icon has been changed the other thing is the menu bar layout which is the main thing that you should know and understand so here on the menu bar you can see show menu bar item so if you place any item here like if i place and drag and drop the drop hour icon here it's going to be shown on your menu bar but if you want your menu bar to be clean you can just simply drag and drop these files in the hidden menu bar item and they will not be shown on the top just so and if you want to view these items you can just simply press on this bartender icon and all of these icons will be shown again having this kind of software will make your menu bar much cleaner and you uh, you're going to only see the information from those apps that are crucial to you if you go for show for updates so this is another thing for wi-fi i have enable this option so basically what this does is that whenever i'm going to have no wi-fi connection only then the wi-fi icon will be shown otherwise it will not be shown and will be hidden so yeah guys these are the 11 essential apps that i think every mac user should have if you guys like this video like share subscribe if you have any of the questions write them in the comment section below and all the download links for all of these softwares free or paid are in the video description as well other than that thank you for watching and as always stay safe